One of the most common questions that I get from patients is about their diet and whether or not their diet is causing their condition, making their condition worse, or if changing their diet can perhaps improve their condition. And this is true in my experience for patients with just about any dermatologic problem, whether it's a skin cancer or a dermatitis or an inflammatory process. The most common question I get about diet is in patients with acne. And I think there's a lot of literature and then there's a lot of misinformation, especially on the web, about specific diets that may or may not make acne worse or may improve patients' acne. If you actually look at things that have data behind them, diets that are low in glycemic index may actually help some patients. And since they tend to be healthier diets, I just tend to recommend them because it's good for the patient's overall health. Whether or not to cut out dairy from their diet is another very common question that I get from patients with acne. Now there is some evidence that a low dairy diet or a non-dairy diet can help with acne. It's not conclusive, but there is some evidence. And the reason for this is the amount of hormones that's present in livestock. So if we talk about the importance of insulin growth factor and glycemic index in causality or causation of acne, it, it may be important to stick to organic dairy products and really try to consume things that are hormone free or have low hormones in general terms. Another very common question from acne patients is whether or not they can eat chocolate. Now there are some studies showing that chocolate does cause acne or make acne worse and there's some evidence that it doesn't. So with this particular question I really try to tailor the answer to each patient. So I kind of throw it back to them and say, well what happens when you eat a lot of chocolate? If your acne gets worse then really stay away from it. But if it doesn't, it probably doesn't make a difference for your specific condition. The other thing that's come up, and really it's been um, kind of recently and it's been more and more, is whether or not to take zinc supplements as an approach to treating acne. And there's some evidence in the literature that taking zinc may improve acne. Usually I don't recommend it, uh, but if patients ask and they're okay with taking zinc, then I don't see why it would be harmful to them. And a lot of patients will actually say that zinc supplements have improved their acne. Psoriasis is another condition where patients often ask about diet. Now patients usually ask when they first have the onset of psoriasis if it's something that they ate or something that they're eating that caused this onset or during their treatment, if, especially if they have a flare-up, they'll ask if food may be related. Now there's more and more evidence that psoriasis is not just a skin disease, it's really a systemic disease. And there's more and more evidence in the literature regarding the cardiovascular risks associated with psoriasis. We also know that most psoriasis patients tend to be overweight. So when patients ask me about diet, I often recommend heart healthy diets such as a cardiovascular diet, a weight loss diet, and then there's some other diets that patients may be interested in such as an anti-inflammatory diet or a gluten-free diet. For this particular patient subset, I will often refer them to a nutritionist to see if a specific diet can be tailored to what their needs are. So it's very important to have that discussion about the systemic effects or the systemic risk of psoriasis and diet is a, is a really, really important point here that you can do to improve the patient's uh, condition in general. Urticaria or hives is another condition where diet may be important. We do know that vasoactive amines such as shellfish or strawberries can make hives worse. Salicylate, such as tomatoes or strawberries or tea, can also often make urticaria or hives worse. Now this may be important in patients with acute urticaria because a lot of times it's something that they ate that's causing the urticaria in the first place, but it's also important in patients with chronic urticaria to really go through this. Now what I usually do is I work with an allergist to really try to flush out exactly what foods the patient may be allergic to. In conclusion, I think diet is one of the more common questions that we get from patients regarding their specific condition. I also think it's our job to know the literature and know what's out there that the patients may be reading so we can really educate them about their diet 
and whether or not their diet may or may not contribute to their particular condition. Because if we don't perform this education, the patient will simply go online and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I think it's really important for us to know the data and be able to educate our patients regarding what's out there about their diet and their specific condition.